So I want to start this video off by considering one of our previous results that said that if we have the square root of 3 and I square that, I get 3. Now, the result here, 3, is of course 3 to the power of 1. Okay, that's the same thing as 3. And I want to recall that we have an index law that says b to the power of x to the power of y is b to the power of x times y. So the idea here is that would I be able to write down that exa exact same expression but in a form of 3 to the power of something, some mystery value here, squared is equal to 3 to the 1. So rather than writing it square root 3, I can write it as 3 to the power of something. Now, using our result over here, I know that this number needs to multiply with the 2 to make 1. So let's say that this value is x, this unknown that I need to find. What I'm saying is that x times by 2, when I multiply those indices together, I must get 1. So 2x has to be 1. So x has to be 1 half. So what this is telling me is that in order for all of this to really work, root 3 is the same as 3 to the half. Now let's continue that train of logic. Um, what about if I had the cube root of 5 and I cube that? Now we've seen that that has to be equal to 5 which is the same as 5 to the power of 1. So if I was to be able to write the cube root of 5 as 5 to the power of something, then I need this expression to work using our rule of indices. When we have the brackets, we multiply them together. So if I call this value x, then I've got x times 3 must be equal to 1, using our rule here. So 3x must be 1. So in this case, x would have to be 1 third. So the cube root of 5 has to be 5 to the power of 1 third. So what we're seeing is that in general, I can use that rule to show that the xth root of b is the same as b to the power of 1 over x. So this is another rule that we can add to our rules of indices, our laws of indices. Now that begs the question, as to what happens then if we've got uh, something other than 1 in the numerator. Now, what does that mean? So let's just rub this out for the moment. Let's explore that. So what about if I had something like, um, let's go with... Um, 2 to the power of um, 3 halves. OK. What could that possibly mean? Now, I'm going to go back to this. Let's go back to that rule. b to the power of x all to the power of y is b to the power of x times y. Now, actually, we know that x times y has to be the same as y times x. OK, these have to be the same. So what I could do is I could say, well, does it matter 
if I'm doing b to the power of x, then to the power of y, isn't this just the same as b to the power of y to the power of x? Because y times x has to be the same as x times y. So actually, the order in which I apply the two powers doesn't matter. OK, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that 3 halves is the same as saying, well, that's 3 times 1 half. OK, so 3 over 2 being the same as 3 times a half means that I should be able to write that as 2 cubed to the power of a half or, given that 3 times a half is the same as half times 3, as 2 to the power of a half to the power of 3. Both of these two things must be the same. So, 2 to the power of 3 halves being the same as 2 cubed to the power of half, it's the same as 8 to the power of a half, or the square root of 8. These two things have to be the same, which is the same as 2 to the power of half cubed, so root 2 or cubed, if you like. So what this is telling me is that I could generalise that and say that if I've got b to the power of x over y, then that is b to the power of x to the power of 1 over y, or that's the same as b to the power of y, sorry, b to the power of 1 over y, I should say, all to the power of x. Those two things are the same. So it's the yth root of b to the x, or the yth root of b, all to the power of x. So we can generalise our fractional index to mean either of those two forms. Now, the reason why I might focus on one rather than the other, because it, it really depends on uh, what I'm trying to do with it, uh, where I'm trying to simplify uh, an expression down. I might choose one over the other. The reason being is I might have something where I go, OK, well, I've got some number to the power of two thirds. I've got a choice. Do I square it first and then cube root? Or do I cube root and then square it? Quite often, the cube rooting and the squaring is going to be easier. OK? Really depends on the situation. But quite often, that will be the case.